Hey everyone, J-Rod Place here. This video is going to be a supplement to the Season 22 guide that I made going over specifically the Altar of Summoning Encounters and each of the ones that you'll face this week, Week 1 of Season of the Witch. Before I actually start the encounter information, though, I do want to cover when you first get in to the Altars of Summoning, there's going to be a large platform in the center. And in that platform, you're going to notice a bunch of symbols floating over some smaller areas below that are lit. These sigils on the ground can be interacted with. And once you interact with the sigil, you start to grab your altar and perform a ritual of induction. Now, the ritual of induction, it prepares you for the future fights that you'll be getting. And this is kind of a way to start and get ammo in between encounters as you, as you clear an entire bar and do your full tithe, either by getting a bunch of smaller summons together or doing two, sometimes to two and a half of the powerful summons. And once you do that, Eris will give you the rewards and then you come back to the center and this is how you started. So either when you first land or when you actually are in between encounters, you're going to come back to the center and you're going to do the ritual of induction. Now there's a right way to do this. Uh, there's not necessarily a wrong way, but it doesn't help very much when you do it the wrong way. Uh, there's going to be symbols that are floating. You'll notice this week it's a bunch of ones that look like a jellyfish and then there's the X with the little dagger pointing down. So these symbols, there's only three with the X with the dagger pointing down and the rest are jellyfish. So if you were to grab one of the jellyfish and then one of the dagger symbols, for example, and you finish the induction that way, all you get is a few orbs of power and maybe like a little bit of ammo. However, if you do all three of the daggers, because there's only three of them and there's three of you that load in, if you do all those together and you synchronize, you'll end up getting full super and more ammunition that way. So that's a little bonus. You get what they call a loosened blessing. That's going to start you out on the right foot, and then you're going to drive over to the altars to then deposit your summons. Now, of course, you have your Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3 summons. Very similar to the Court of Orcs in Destiny 1, how there were different levels that you could start it at. And so in this case, the three that you get, you'll be getting those from the Spire encounter, and when you put on armor, for the season, you can put up to four pieces to give you the, the highest chance you'll get additional summons from completing the Spire, and you'll also get some from completing some of the Altars as well. So it's not a guarantee that you get them from the Altar, but you will get them from the Altar. If you're completing Powerfuls, you get a higher chance of getting Powerfuls, especially once you switch to the Armor Sets as you're completing them, and that's what I'll do, is I'll get ready to receive the Tithe, and right after the encounter is over, I immediately pull up my inventory, and I switch over one by one, because right now the loadouts are busted into my armor set for the season so that I get my highest chance of getting some additional summons. And I haven't run out really since of the, the tier 2 and tier 1s. The tier 3 are the only ones that I go through very quickly because you only get a few of them here and there and they're going to really speed up your time. So I would recommend gathering maybe like between 2 and 4 powerfuls and then the rest just fill with the tier 2 and tier 1s and then come in and a lot of times with that mix you'll end up having somebody else with a couple of powerfuls and somebody else with a couple of powerfuls and it'll last you quite some time as you're playing through these encounters. So now let's get into the encounters. I'm going to cover them in the order in which I encountered them when I was playing through the first few days and I'll go over the mechanics and some of the changes based on if you're doing it on the powerful or if you're doing it on the normal like the kind of the normal setting is the tier 2. The feeble setting really doesn't matter too much because you shouldn't fail a feeble since everything has such low health and it gives you such small progress that it's almost not even worth doing the feeble. So let's get into the first encounter. So the first encounter that I experience is going to be the Void Ritual, otherwise known as the Void Keepers. The objective there is to destroy abominations and you're going to destroy them in waves until you get a final larger abomination as the final boss. And the way that it works is void crystals are going to spawn around the room. They're protected by a barrier. And you have to be inside the barrier for now in order to destroy the crystals. They can be punched one shot or they can be shot with ammo. Heavy ammo takes a little bit if you're running like a machine gun. And just be careful what you're shooting it with, of course, because there'll be some blowback using like grenade launchers and things like that. Once you shatter the crystal, then you can jump out and move. And the reason why you want to move quickly is because it's got this annoying mechanic that every time you approach the crystal, a bunch of screeves will spawn and they kind of scatter around and they don't all come at you evenly. So what I had to do was on my warlock, I had to throw a grenade on the ground. I had a pulse grenade that continually cleared screeves so that I could get in, punch the crystal and jump back out again before I was killed by screeve explosions. And the other danger when you're doing this is the shielded lurkers. They'll kind of sneak up on you and they'll try to like team up on you in groups of two 
two, three, and four. And if it gets into that group of three and four, they can actually kill you pretty fast if you don't have the right resistances for them. So always just keep in mind when you see a couple of them grouped together as they start pushing you to clear them out, check your back, make sure they haven't started to group up on you, and, and keep moving. And that's going to be what's going to keep you alive in the encounter because of all the screeves is to continually move, stay in the air, do everything you can, use your abilities to make sure that the screeves do not get to you or your teammates. So once you pop the, the first crystal, you're actually going to see the abominations around the room that are looking at you. They're going to then have no shields. Once they become active, the three abominations, one to the left, right, and one in the middle, will begin trying to focus you down. So you want to pick an abomination, try to get it with your teammates, use your super if you need to, to quickly burn them down so that way they don't team up on you and kill you pretty quickly with their line attacks. Uh, after you've killed the abominations, then you're going to move into the second phase. Now the second phase is very similar. With that, you're going to see in the left, right, and middle, there's going to be three larger abominations with a bigger health pool. And those are going to be kind of like boss level abominations or majors. And when you run up to them, you're going to jump into their bubble the same way, killing Screebs as you go or clearing the Screebs out, getting in and then getting out really quickly so you don't get killed by the second wave of Screebs because they'll spawn continually. Like you can't just clear the wave and then go in safely. Uh, once you pop that crystal, be ready. What I tended to do was I would put myself between the ogre and the pole, like a totem behind them, for example, and you stand against that totem, and what that's going to do is you're close enough proximity to the ogre that it won't do its line lightning attack. It'll actually try to slam... And if you're in a healing rift, you'll be able to heal through that. So what I would do then is just bust out either my glaive or anything that does heavy damage and just burn that abomination down. If I had my super, I would also super the abomination too. So that's kind of how I handled that. My teammates kind of do their own thing. A lot of the times what would happen was I would get my abomination killed and I'd be looking around and the other abominations aren't even like close to being dead. So I'd have to zoom over to the side where my teammates weren't and kill that abomination and by the time I got done with that one, then maybe the other one was killed. Now if that happens, when you get the kill on those three abominations, then you're going to turn your attention back into the center of the arena. A large abomination will spawn with three crystals around him. Once you get in there and clear the three crystals, the abomination becomes active, just like the others. And now all you have to do is deal with the screeves, deal with all the ads popping up, and then kill the boss in the time limit that you have remaining. So this is probably the easiest of all the encounters. It's just annoying because of the screeves continually spawning under your feet. And if it happens in one of the rooms where there's like a bunch of pillars and things where the abominations kind of hide behind and you're forced to push up into the screeves, it's a little bit more daunting to finish that one with randoms that are not very good. But for the most part, you should be able to complete this one if you happen to get the Void Keepers. And like I said, to me, the easiest encounter out of the four that are available this week. The second encounter that I experienced was going to be the Vex encounter. It's going to be the Ternary Mines. It's going to be three Gatelord bosses that are facing each other, and they have a shared health pool. When the first one activates, the enemies will begin spawning in, and you want to make sure you prioritize the two Wyverns that are going to spawn in when doing a powerful. If you're doing a regular Tier 1 or Tier 2, it's just going to be a Hydra. Those can be pretty much killed with a lot of AoE attacks, grenades, things like that, or very largely ignored because they don't really do a whole lot. They kind of just float around, and every now and then they'll shoot at you. But the Wyverns are serious. The Wyverns will push you immediately, and they'll push you at the same time. They usually don't split up. So now you have just like a stream of Void attacks coming at you, and they're hard to get away from from. So what I do is usually when I see the boss pop up, I back up a little bit to get some height, and then I get in the air and I hit the wyverns with a grenade and my super at the same time so that they can't get away, and I'll burn anything down remaining with heavy ammo just to make sure that there's no more wyverns as a threat to the team. A lot of the teammates that I played with didn't really prioritize them, so it was kind of my job to make sure that they didn't get around and kill everybody, and they will kill everybody very quickly and cost you a lot of time in this encounter. I haven't failed this encounter yet because of them, but it definitely uh, I'm sure it kills a lot of teams and fails a lot of teams because they just let the wyverns stay up and they will just constantly, constantly kill your team and have them start back at the start again. Now the next thing that you're going to look out for is after a little bit of doing damage to the first boss or killing the first boss, what will happen is uh, if you take too long to kill these bosses, a set of four hobgoblins will spawn in and a message on the screen will talk about preventing sacrifices. So there will be confluxes that are on the outer rim of the arena. 
and you'll see it turn red and activate, and you'll kind of see the indication of where the four hobgoblins are. And these four hobgoblins have quite a bit of health, and they're going to march slowly toward the conflicts and try to sacrifice. They also have this, the annoying ability still of going immune. If you have an anti-barrier auto set up, you can just run them down with an auto while they're still immune and make sure that they don't make it there. And the reason why you want to prioritize these guys is because if any of them sacrifice, then it starts another phase where you have a Vex cube that spawns in the air, and that Vex cube will then reach out and put an overshield on all of the bosses that are still alive. And when I say all the bosses, usually what will happen is you'll kill that first boss really quickly, and then the second boss will activate, and shortly behind that boss, the third boss will activate, so you have two bosses running around. And since they have a shared health pool, people are damaging two different bosses in two different sets, they don't just pick one if they're not already on a pre-made team. And because of that, you end up with two half-health bosses teleporting around and trying to prevent you from killing the sacrifices, which is really annoying because the hobgoblins will laser you down. Two hobgoblins will, will usually... Two hobgoblins will usually focus one guardian, and they'll hit you with a couple of shots, and you're pretty much one shot. And this week, you actually have to get kills and pick up little wells of light in order to restore your health or use an ability. For me, I was running Healing Rift, and that's how I was staying alive, as I would get around the corner, pop a rift, and then kind of peek shoot these guys. I would also try to get in there with grenade launchers, heavy ammo, anything that I can think of to try to make sure I push them off of those spawns because I didn't want the bosses to armor up. I mean, it doesn't take very long to clear those cubes, but it does take a pretty good amount of your heavy clip from a machine gun or a lot of regular ammo from primary or a secondary. So you just want to make sure they don't sacrifice in the first place so you don't waste that time. Once you kill all the sacrifices, you go back to DPS and the boss. You will get two more wyverns spawning in, or two more hydra if you're on any other difficulty. And again, you're going to want to focus the wyverns down with everything that you have, heavy ammo, grenades, any super abilities that you haven't used yet or that you've generated again, depending on your build. And you want to make sure that those threats are taken out quickly, and then go right back to finishing the bosses. And as long as you kill the bosses within that time frame, you'll complete the encounter. Now the two next encounters are going to be hive related and these hive related encounters do have a little bit of variance between them and I'll go over some things to look out for that they may have in common between the two. The first one that I experienced was actually going to be the Ark Singers and what the Ark Singers encounter does is it spawns a wizard in the very middle of the room and that wizard has a crystal in front of him pulsing with arc light. Now you want to make sure that you prioritize targets just like the other encounters and what will happen is at the very beginning of the fight two knights will spawn in and these knights of course have the annoying ability of going into their super and throwing shields around that bounce around and kill guardians. So what I'll do again just like the wyverns from the vex encounter is I'll pop my super, I'll use all my abilities, I'll use as much heavy as I have to try to make sure that I take these guys out. Even if the other two teammates aren't focusing these guys I'm focusing them. I'll let them run around and mess around with the mechanics or get their melee kills whatever it is. I want to make sure these guys aren't available in the middle of the encounter to run around and get kills. And don't forget, they're loose and hive, so you have to make sure you finish their ghosts. So I started running the proximity mod on my bond, so that way whenever I would get in there and I would get my finish, I would get that heavy shield, and then I'd be able to get back out while the shield was still up. And you do need that shield because the arc boss puts a lot of damage out. So that's going to be the requirement that I would say is as a random, if you're doing this random, or even if you have teams, just to make sure, again, you're going to be focusing these knights down because they can just be annoying and they can get you delayed by quite a bit if they get themselves into a spot where they continually kill your guardians one after another after another when you're trying to get reses and people always tend to res you in the like the, the worst conditions you know you'll be in a situation where the, the wizard is just pelting your orb with arc energy the titans are there slamming and throwing their shields and one of your blueberries is going to still run up and res you into all that and you're just going to insta die again wasting your time and preventing you from even resing you can't hit the res button while you're being rezzed <laughs> so you can't even get out of that situation you just have to take it uh, so that's what i recommend is clear the knights first and then move on to the actual mechanic which is going to be to punch the arc crystal in the center that's going to give you a buff that you can take to the other crystals and charge the other crystals around the room and they'll have an indicator over them of a little melee symbol and that tells you basically to run up and melee it and of course, if you activate one, it'll stay activated, meaning you can come back to the one that you just activated if you run out of your buff. So that way you don't have to run back into the center of the room into danger. You can just grab from one of the sides an active crystal and work your way across. 
Another thing to pay attention to as you're activating the crystals is to make sure you take your time and to kill the wizards that spawn next to the crystals. Each crystal will have a wizard next to it in a shield, and once the crystal is activated, the wizard's shield will dissipate and the wizard will become active. I always like to kill them instantly, because if you don't kill them instantly, or you don't line up a few of them with your super to kill instantly, then they're going to start focusing guardians one at a time and knocking them out, forcing them back to start, wasting your time, and they're going to actually prevent you from getting in a good spot to do damage to the boss. So they will add up, and they will pile up. Don't let them. Just kill them as you're killing the crystal. Turn back around, get your charge from the crystal, and then move on to the next crystal, kill that wizard, and go all the way around until everything's completed. Now once you've charged all the crystals, then you'll see in the center of the arena will be a glyph and the staff that you're using with Eris in order to empower Eris through tithing. If you're going to run up and grab the staff, it's going to perform a short ritual, which you will be vulnerable for, so I tend to drop a rift, and then from there, after the ritual, the crystals will explode, and the boss will become vulnerable for going forward. Once the crystals break, you're going to move into the next phase. In that next phase, the boss will be vulnerable forevermore for the rest of the encounter. And then what will happen is two acolytes will spawn, two hunter acolytes with the ability to do later rounds will spawn with the boss. So again, I recommend focusing them down because what they're going to do is they're going to spend time distracting guardians and keeping your guardians from doing DPS. The non lucent Hive Captain Acolytes, so the normal Acolytes will pile up around you and chip away at your health, leaving the Captains to then go into their Blade Barrage and just one-shot you with their Blade Barrage. Even if you're standing in your Rift, even if you've got heals going, maybe that Titan aspect that can give it the banner can survive it, but most characters are going to get killed through that damage because the boss will focus you, the Acolytes will focus you, and the adds around you are focusing you. So if you're not thinning out the adds, if you're not working down the Acolytes and getting rid of the Acolytes, you're not going to be able to DPS the boss pretty effectively. Now once you do kill those Acolytes, and once you do clear enough adds, you can gather on one rally point with your teammates and just melt the boss. And that's the best thing that I recommend because the boss has a ton of health, he moves around, or she moves around, and it's very hard to hit with things like rockets unless you tracking uh, you know obviously with good aim you have no problem but not everybody's got the best of aim or if you're on a controller you have a little trouble with those things you're gonna miss some rockets sometimes you're gonna miss some grenades sometimes I tend to throw grenades at her feet I tend to shoot rockets around her feet to make sure that if she moves I still catch some damage with it I started switching to machine gun though as I was running these because the machine gun was just more reliable damage and that wizard can be killed pretty quickly if you follow that step of clearing out the adds, clearing out the acolytes, and then picking a spot and just putting up a defensive measure and going to town on the boss. So that's what I recommend. You kill the boss within the time. This is going to be, to me, one of the hardest bosses to beat. And the reason being is that the thing that the two Hive encounters have in common is that on top of all of the things that we just mentioned, on top of all of that chaos, there's a chance that you'll get an encounter with Shrieker spawning. And sometimes it's two Shriekers, and sometimes it's five Shriekers, and they're spawning in weird positions and weird angles, and it's hard to get cover because you're already dead from the enemies on the ground, you're almost dead, and you have very little health, and your shields aren't responding because of the modifier this week. And so then you're trying to take cover, but another Shrieker from a different angle will pick you off. So it's always good that once you're seeing the change of the phase or at the very beginning of the fight to fall back to the front where you're doing the summons and from there you have a defensive position between the two pillars and between the center pillar that kind of sticks up like a crenellation that sticks up in the very middle to take cover and duck behind so that you can kill those first two shriekers closer to you and then you can move up and either use your super to kill the back two or you can use heavy again to kill the back two but once you clear those front ones out and clear those back ones out then the encounter is normal again. But every time you switch and every time there's new summons in between these phases, just keep in mind there's a chance for more Shriekers. So once something changes, once you move into another phase, always go back to the front, look for the Shriekers, take them out first, set the priority, then the Lucent Hive, then the boss. Now the final encounter that I experienced was going to be the Lucent Hive encounter or Lucent Tribute. And with this encounter that's going to spawn a main boss, it's going to be a large knight, and then he'll spawn smaller around him. So he'll have a, he'll have a large grouping of regular acolytes with mixed in uh, acolytes that have the hunter ability spawning in with him normally. Those acolytes are going to be the same as in the other encounters. You're going to want to prioritize them because they're going to do exactly what the other ones do. They're going to pop their blade barrage and they're going to pick at you from long range and they're just going to make it very difficult for you to complete your encounter. Now this boss can be burned with a good group so what's going to happen is you're going to burn him down to his first third. He's going to wall up and then from there, you're going to see spawning in groups of two or kind of staggered group of three uh, hive wizards. Those wizards are marked as tribute wizards. So when you go and kill them, they're going to drop a moat. You're going to pick that moat up, and then you're going to take that into the shining 
totem that you'll see from across the map because it turns red. It's just like the ones that start to turn red before they wipe your team in many of the hive encounters. Now you can also activate deep sight and what the deep sight does is it activates platforms that'll let you traverse the encounter easier so you can go from side to side much quicker. And once you've got three tributes deposited into the active totem, that's going to push him into the next phase. Now when you push into the next phase, it's going to be just like the first phase. He's going to spawn in more acolytes and he's going to spawn in more uh, lieutenants and so you want to make sure you're taking out the lieutenants making sure to kill their ghosts because again they're loose in hive and you're gonna burn him down again to his last third now once you get to his last third it's gonna be very similar and you want to make sure that you take note just like the other hive encounter that in these thirds there also is a chance of spawning shriekers and when the shriekers spawn they can spawn like in groups of two like I mentioned the other encounter sometimes groups of four or five and sometimes they're normal red bars and sometimes they're orange bars and have a lot more health so there's that's a little bit random that's not guaranteed of what you're gonna get so every time that we get him down into his thirds I fall back into the main section where you do your summons and I take a look and survey and make sure before I go out out into the arena that I've killed all of the shriekers that are available. I even save my super. If I see that there's shriekers the next time around, I have my super ready, take out the two closest to me or the two that I have visual on, and then I take cover and peek shoot the other two until they're dead and just ignore everything else. Shriekers die first, then I can pick at the loosened hive, finish the loosened hive, and then if they still need help, the blueberries that are going around and for sure they're going to be just following the objective, they're going to be killing the tributes and then dying with him. Uh, <laughs> if they are are alive or if they've deposited tributes I go on to finish helping the deposits what's a good practice is that if you're near one of the totems that's active and you happen to be killing all the stuff in the middle to just peek at the totem every now and then because whenever somebody pays up a tribute a bunch of acolytes will then go and gather on the totem so you can throw a nade at the totem or you can help clear out those acolytes so that they won't pick off and kill your teammate that's approaching with tributes and delay you any further now this one is more on the easy side, but don't forget that with the Shriekers, this encounter can become extremely difficult if nobody's killing the Shriekers and you're the only one trying to do it, and then you have Acolytes running around ganging up on you because you have Blueberries that are just terrible. So the main thing, again, with all of these encounters is to try to get off to a good start by doing the ritual in the very beginning correctly and getting your super and your ammo. Uh, make sure that you're picking up the orbs whenever somebody starts one of these encounters. Two orbs will usually pop up from their feet that are pretty strong orbs to top you off. Uh, making sure to save your super for the priority targets, beating like the Wyverns and the Vex encounter. Uh, you want to save your supers for the captains, the hive lieutenants that are there. Uh, in the other hive encounters, the shriekers for sure if you have shriekers. And then in the encounter with the ogres, you don't really have to save your super for anything in particular. I happen to use mine on the bigger ogres, the boss uh, level ogres that were marked as like super majors ogres, kind of like champion level ogres. They don't have, thankfully yet, any kind of unstoppable or overload or anti-barrier champions in this, but I imagine as the season goes on, you'll actually see that they'll start to add some champions in a higher level difficulty, and that's probably how we're going to unlock some of the major arcana that are left going through the season. So that's pretty much the altar encounters that we have this week. Next week I'll be doing the encounters again and running through and grabbing the next four encounters and making a guide for that. So thanks very much for all my new subscribers. Thanks very much for watching the end, and I'll see you guys in the next one.
If Sivu had just realized that, I think she would have joined Sabathun in a heartbeat. That would have been something to see. Thank you.